2015's Ori in the Blind Forest was a standout platform adventure that was as atmospheric and beautiful as it was challenging. Rather than bash out a quick sequel to capitalise on the success, developer Moon Studios have taken their time, ensuring that we get not just a worthy successor, but a game that's practically better than the first in every conceivable way. The fact that it was released on the exact 5 year anniversary of the original is an especially nice touch from Microsoft too. Having restored life to the Forest of Nebel, Ori and the Will of the Wisps begins with our hero and his surrogate family living peacefully, raising an owl named Ku, whose egg was seen hatching as the first game ended. Their story is once again told in a fantastic opening montage that really makes you care for the characters and maybe even brings the odd tear to your eye. As Ku learns to fly, both he and Ori become separated by a storm and find themselves stranded on a new island, needing to find their way home. While the gameplay is essentially 2D, this is a vibrant, living 3D world, and at times it can look truly astounding. The environment looks and feels real. The way leaves move in the breeze and the use of colour and lighting make you want to reach into the screen and touch it. All the wildlife you encounter, both friendly and hostile, is full of character and beautifully animated. If you're not a fan of spiders, you may find one latter section particularly tricky to navigate. Topping the presentation off is a stunning orchestral soundtrack by Gareth Coker, who really deserves the name check. It swells and soars when it needs to and heightens the danger in tricky sections. Expect to see it at least nominated for the best soundtrack at the end of the year. Although the game essentially feels the same as the first, there are a few subtle changes for both better and worse that help keep it fresh. For starters, Ori can now attack enemies himself thanks to a light sword, and you'll need to master this if you want to get to the end of the game. You can now unlock multiple abilities, which are here called shards, and activate them as you see fit. Initially, only three can be active at once, but as you upgrade, this number does increase. The fast travel option, added to the original in its definitive edition, is also present, meaning you can quickly move around the huge map, as long as you've found and activated each shrine. Disappointingly, the soul links, which allowed you to create your own checkpoints in the first game, have been removed. As you open up the world, you'll encounter many secrets and enemy types, including some great boss fights and a few hugely thrilling chases. Sadly, what makes these chases a little less thrilling is having to repeat them all the way from the beginning if you die, but the feeling of exhilaration when you manage to finish them is incredible. Boss fights can be the wrong side of frustrating too. Even when you work out the pattern, actually pulling it off can be difficult due to the sheer number of controls you need to memorise. As good as the game is, it doesn't always do a good job of explaining everything either. Early on in the game, we couldn't work out how to open a door and then spent an hour going around the map thinking that we'd missed something. A quick internet search later revealed a technique that the game had just barely hinted at, but without explaining why you might need it. Considering every other ability you acquire throughout the game has a quick single screen tutorial, it's a minor oversight in an otherwise decent learning curve. We've encountered a couple of graphical glitches in our time playing it, but nothing that breaks the game in any way. If you're planning on finding every secret the game has to offer, you're going to need upwards of 12 hours and a lot of patience. Ori and the Will of the Wisps is not only a fantastic sequel, but also a fantastic mix of precision platforming and stimulating combat that provides a meaty challenge for newcomers and veterans alike.